Amen sa, Vicky Hainsalway. Get sani. Genetic pedeki. Will salus will so it we. Greetings, everyone. My name is Vicki Haynes. I'm joining you today from the sovereign homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. And I raise my hands to the nations of the Kwantlen, Musqueam, Ketsi, Semiamu, Suwasin, Kekate, and Kukwetlam nations, on whose territory KPU and thus KDOCs reside. Thank you so much for joining us for KDOCs 2022, Seeking Truth, Waging Change. And thank you so much to KDOCs for inviting me to speak today. Not only am I here as an instructor in the Indigenous Studies and Policy Studies departments of KPU, when I'm not teaching here, I also teach at Native Education College and I work for the Indian Residential School Survivors Society, Sa'us Center, and Kilalalilam wellness center downtown. To be honest, I'm not really sure how to begin this keynote address. Seeking truth, waging change is such a Herculean topic. There's so much that could be said. I'm not really sure how to address such a broad topic in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I don't know how to speak well to such a notion. But I know that I can share this with you. Before I sat down to prepare this address, I went out for groceries and I was confronted with an anti-vax rally. And I had no idea it was happening. And it was just a few blocks from my home. And it's really staying with me. It felt unsafe. It's forcing me to think about violence against indigenous people. Violence at the hands of the RCMP. Violence stemming from the extractive resource man camps. The violence of the opioid crisis. The ongoing recovery of our children from mass unmarked graves at residential school sites across the nation. It all gives me the same sinking feeling as I felt in my guts the first time I read the hashtag reconciliation is dead. It's all so heavy. And I think, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Because here is a very weird place. It's an historic, transitional, ephemeral time. It's a moment where these are not fringe issues. It's a time where our values as a group have at once both become more crystallized and more changeable. But I suppose crisis has a way of doing that. Wildfires, landslides, drought, flood, COVID. But that's not to say that that's why social justice is a common phrase now. It's not to say that there were no moments of social change prior to our collective hibernation. But I do want to say that in our hibernation has come a collective ability to be quiet, to reflect, to be shown both what is and what's possible. Time to reassess our values and the culture we live in and an opportunity to choose something better. We have started to rethink what is important, what we need and what we want in order to flourish, not to survive. During our moment of pause, the planet began to breathe again. Wildlife and fish returned to long-abandoned waterways. 
skies that we thought permanently stained brown were suddenly awash in blue, as soon as we put a pause on our polluting ways. I'm seeing news stories about private citizens taking on the land back call that indigenous people have been working towards. I've seen workers begin to realize their worth and to know finally that work-life balance on a living wage isn't nice or something to aim for. It's a necessity and it's possible now. It's possible now. Employers might take a little bit more time to catch up, but hey, that's all right. You know, the phrase Black Lives Matter has never meant more to so many people. Do you remember when for months on end, we all gathered across the nation to demonstrate our gratitude and support for those healthcare and frontline workers? I've even seen memes using the phrase, surviving terminal stage capitalism. <laughs> How is that for a burgeoning cultural awareness? I love it. The more I think about it, the more examples I can find of people coming together to speak their truths, to be heard, and to care for one another. We are beginning to see more clearly beginning to speak and be heard, to care for one another. We're beginning to listen and understand. In some ways it's because collectively we've lost so much, but our losses have allowed truth to shine through in ways that we couldn't have anticipated I was taught that you have to be intentional with how you fill the space in your life, especially in the face of loss. That's because if you don't decide what to put in the place of loss, the universe will decide for you. So it's important to fill that space with something good. We've seen so many good things. We've seen that a better future is possible, one where we can care for one another and be in good relationship with one another. A future where we will continue to have futures. What future will we learn? What future will we choose for ourselves? How will we fill the void left by the ravages of the global pandemic and the pain of understanding the state of justice in our world? How will we fill the spaces left by our shared loss and sacrifice. My hope for you is that over the course of this festival, you will see and be inspired to find ways that fill that void, that you will be energized by the stories that are shared, and that you too will see a path forward. I hope you will join me in believing that reconciliation isn't dead. It just hasn't been born. I hope you enjoy the festival. Thank you so much for coming here.
Amayuksa, Viki Hanshul Way, Gitsani, Ganede Batehi, Wilps Halus Wilsa Witwe. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vicki Haynes. I'm joining you today from the sovereign homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil Nations. And I want to raise my hands to the Kwantlen, Musqueam, Semiamu, Suwasin, Kikait, and Kukwetlam Nations for hosting Kwantlen, Kwantlen Polytechnic University and KDOCS. I'm so pleased to welcome you today to KDOCS 2022, Seeking Truth, Waging Change. I'll be your moderator for tonight's special live Q&A for warrior women, Lupita and Mary 2X, I am Indian again. Tonight's event is the second of three live offerings at KDOX 2022, where 20 films will screen, including keynote addresses, Q and A's, and so much more. We hope you've already enjoyed these films and are ready to meet the people who bring them to life and to engage in a lively discussion about Indigenous resistance, activism, and matriarchy. A few guidelines before we get started. The chat is active, so you're welcome to post comments and questions, some of which will be answered by the panelists. The live session is being recorded and will be made available for future viewings of these films at KDOCS 2022. Also, the recording will be posted on the KDOCS YouTube channel, KDOCS Talks. So without further ado, let's begin. Please welcome to KDOCS, Madonna Thunderhawk, Marcella Gilbert, Guadalupe Vasquez Luna, also known as Lupita, Monica Wise Robles, and Jody Callahu Stonehouse. To start, I'd love to give each of the panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves. So Madonna, if I can hand it over to you, that would be lovely. Hello. Yeah, my name is Madonna Thunderhawk and I'm here in South Dakota. My reservation is in the north central part of South Dakota. And uh, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madonna. And can I invite Marcella to go next? Hello, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, I especially want to give a, give a thank you to our indigenous relatives. Thank you for letting us be here in this way. Um, I also am living in South Dakota and uh, doing what you know, doing what you do when you're involved with the what's going on in, in Indian country. So. We'll visit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marcella. Uh, Lupita. Lupita, te puedes presentar, por favor? Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. Este, mi nombre es Guadalupe Vázquez Luna. Soy de la comunidad de Acteal, municipio de Chenalo, estado de Chiapas, México, y soy miembro de la organización Sociedad Civil Las Abejas de Acteal, sobreviviente de la masacre de Acteal. Entonces, I'm Guadalupe Vázquez Luna, um, from Chenalo, Chiapas, survivor of the Acteal massacre, and part of the organization Las Abejas de Acteal, or the Bees of Acteal, in Chiapas, México. And, and, and buenas noches to everyone is good night. Hello. <laughs> Lovely, thank you so much. Monica, can I invite you to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Monica Wise. I'm the director of the film we made with Lupita called Lupita in Spanish, Lupita que retiembre la tierra, which means um, um, how the earth shakes. I guess, and I'm based in Mexico City. I'm originally from California and my family is Colombian and I'm happy to be here. And this is an amazing group of women that I've looked up to for many years. So it's great to have these worlds combined. Thanks, Monica. 
And Jody, how about yourself? Greetings, Tante Toya from Treaty 6. It's a, a real honor to sit uh, with such extraordinary women doing incredible work. And uh, particularly for me to sit at, with Madonna, I've been, uh, and I've admired her work for a very long time. And uh, you're, you've changed the world for many of our people and particularly our women and children. And so um, it's just a real blessing to be here with each of you. Thank you so much, Jody. And thanks to everyone for your time. And thank you to you in the audience for coming to listen today. I know that uh, sometimes it takes a little bit for audience members to warm up and think of some questions that they'd like to ask. So what I'll do is I'm going to get us started off with a couple of questions. And the first one that I'd like to put to the panelists is, when I was watching each of these films, something that really struck me was this theme and repeated idea of a matriarchy of resistance that somehow Indigenous activism has become a hereditary birthright. And I'm curious to know if this concept resonates with any of you. Is there someone who feels like they have a response to this question that they'd like to share? I think the evidence is with Marcella and Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> There's some birthright matriarchy happening right there and right before our eyes. <laughs> Go ahead, Mom. <clears throat> okay. Well, you know, I I don't remember doing any real deep thinking about it, especially when I was younger, because we were in an era where action was happening constantly. In fact, in the United States, the whole country was in the, on the move, you know, the anti-war movement, anti-Vietnam war movement, uh, the rise of the of women, uh, Black Panther Party. I mean, just, uh, you know, brown rays, all kinds of things were happening and uh, we were a part of that. So it was just uh, more or less of, um, you know, we just we just did what we what we do. No, it wasn't like we had to sit down and hold meetings and decide what to do. You know, we just uh, organized and did it, you know. And I don't remember that even being an issue because we were so focused on, on what was going on at the time. And it's always been land back struggle, you know, for us. So that was the focus. So I think it's just like part of, of, of our society, or even in this modern, modern day that we live and the colonization, you know, and the colonized thinking. And in spite of all of that, we uh, knew our place and we just did what we had to do. Thanks, Madonna. Marcella, do you have anything that you'd like to add or or change? <laughs> uh, change? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, I think that, now remember when this was going on, I was a teenager, okay? So I was doing what I was told basically and just enjoying it. But um, as I, you know, growing, growing up in with the mindset, and I don't want to say growing up being an activist, because that's a new, that's a new term. You know, um, but growing up within the movement of the American Indian movement and women of all red nations, there was, you know, a responsibility to be aware and to know what's going on in your community and how can you help? If, if you choose to help, what are you gonna do? And, um, and so you see that happening now and there's not a whole lot of, um, you know, sitting down and planning. People are just like, you know what? we need to go, we need to learn more about this. Let's learn more about it. Let, you know, let's, let's organize, let's do something, you know? So I think it's, it was very organic, but in, in response to your question, um, I think that because of our historical uh, life ways, the women were in charge of the home and the community 
And the men protected that and their world was out here and ours was inside. And so I think for, for women to take the roles that we've always taken is because we are, we are uh, tasked through natural law to take care of what is most sacred. And so it makes sense that we would stand up. I mean, we've always stood up. You know, our people have, have warrior women's societies in our history. So it isn't, it isn't new for women to have their own societies and go to war or whatever, you know, um, any kind of conflict or whatever. But, um, but yeah, I think I, that's when I think of your question, that's what, what comes to mind is, you know, it's, it's something that's in all of us. We have, we have a, um, if we have that connection to our, our tribal belief systems or, you know, the way, the way we were intended to live as human beings, protecting the, the family and the children and the women is, is, you know, that's how, that's how it was for our people. And so for women to, to stand up the way we are now, I think that's part of it. It's just in us. Thank you so much, Marcella and Madonna. I really feel like you've added some super helpful context to folks who are watching these films and maybe aren't aware of those systems that have gone on for so long. So thank you for bringing that forward. Um, did Lupita or Monica or Jody want to weigh in on this question or shall I move on to the next question? Well, I, sorry, I, I think in Canada, you know, there's been a wave of women matriarchs who've made an impact. If we look at the work of Ellen Gabriel, Mary Two X early, Ellen E. Sobomzuin, and then we have Madonna Thunderhawk down south. These women not only were advocating for land back, for, you know, responsible, uh, I want to say responsible extraction, but there isn't such a thing. Uh, you know, they have not only put Mother Earth on the forefront, but also our families. You know, one of the things that we really have taken forth from all this matri beautiful matriarchy is uh, the language and the land, bringing our children back. That organization of Madonna when she was having those schools whether it was uh, at Alcatraz or at South Dakota, now we're seeing, you know, nations pick this up and say, yeah, we need to have on the land language schools, fully immersed land and language schools. So matriarchy has been a huge thread in not only our resistance and, and not so much a birthright, but just a following of what these really brilliant and inspire women have done. They've stood up against colonialism. They've stood up against the, the big machinery, the big companies, and said that our people, our spirituality, our language matters far more than any amount of money. And for that, you know, it's pretty incredible the work that they've done. Thank you, Jody. That was really a powerful comment on the topic. And yeah, I'll go back to Monica now and, and invite you in. Um, Lupita, no sé si entendiste lo que te escribí o si tienes algo que quieres agregar a la conversación. Lo que a mí se me ocurre es como algo de enseñanza a los jóvenes, lo que tú has trabajado mucho, ¿no? Eh, sí. Bueno, pues este, yo, yo comparto la, la palabra de las compañeras. Yo creo que la mujer es muy importante, el papel de la mujer en toda lucha, toda resistencia, pues en mi experiencia, en el caminar de la organización de las abejas, han sido ya casi ya va, este año cumple 30, 30 años de la fundación de la organización y pues ha sido muy importante este, pues desde que se funda la organización es por la lucha por el territorio, por la tierra de las mujeres, ¿no? Y pues he visto muchas actividades de mujeres, como por ejemplo el 8 de marzo, cada 8 de marzo se organizan las mujeres la marcha, pero también, este, pues eh, concuerdo totalmente que la mujer es este, quien, este, pues, es, 
ha sido el que participa en el cuidado, eh, en la protección del futuro, ¿no? Porque este, eh, ¿quién se encarga de cuidar los niños? Pues la mujer. ¿no? Entonces, este, yo creo que es muy importante, sin embargo, no, no este, tampoco es que eh, es fundamental, ¿no? La, o es lo, bueno, sí es fundamental, ¿no? pero este, lo que quiero decir es que no, este, no solo la mujer, ¿no? Yo siempre pienso que la mujer y el hombre siempre tienen que caminar juntos en un equilibrio para poder este, lograr el, un objetivo, ¿no? Porque solo, tanto sola la mujer o solo el hombre no se puede. Entonces, bueno, es un poco lo que quiero agregar de todo lo que dijeron. Super. Muchas gracias, Lupita. Um, she says she shares the ideas or sentiment of the other women. I translated a little bit via WhatsApp. Um, and uh, women have always been fundamental in her community for the last 30 years of her organization, especially it, it was actually, this is a side note, but it was actually funded, so uh, founded, so women could have the right to own their land. Um, and it's part of the story. And on March 8th, every year, International Women's Day, it's very important in Latin America as well, um, they, the women of the, her community organize a march. There's a scene, side note also, there's a scene in the film where um, she um, steps up against um, the militaries that are um, bringing in more arms to her territory. Um, for example, and she also said, well, women are the ones who care for the future, the children, like many of you said, so it's fundamental, but also women have to walk in equilibrium with the men to get certain and uh, to get the objectives that they want for the community. Mm -hmm. Hope that was understood. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Guadalupe, and thank you, Monica. Uh, we do have a question from the audience for Madonna and Marcella. We're wondering if you could tell us more about the Warrior Women Project and to share with the audience how they can best support that project. Okay, Marcy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you could buy t-shirts. <laughs> Um, so the Warrior Women Project of, obviously is a uh, project that was that, you know, to support the film, but not just the film, to, to support what we're doing on the ground. So like the work that my mom's doing with um, Lakota People's Law Project, we're both involved with the uh, Washagia Naji Grandmothers Group, which is focused on child welfare issues. And uh, we're also involved with the um, Najo Society, which is focused on human trafficking in and around our reservation and a whole bunch of other stuff. So, but mainly uh, the Warrior Women Project fo is focused on the um, oral histories. So if you go to warriorwomen.org, you can see the, um, the oral histories that, that Elizabeth Castle did, she spent 20 years, 20 some years gathering oral histories of, of women who were involved in the American Indian movement. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're working to build that and, you know, have it accessible for people. So when they go to our website, they can actually see some of the interviews and learn some of the history of, of the movement during that time. So, and then we're trying to put out responsible media as well, uh, you know, because of what happens when, um, you know, there's this whole thing of people coming into our communities and making films about us and then going out. I mean, Standing Rock is a really good, really good example of that where people from all over came to Standing Rock and they all left and made films and we have not seen them again. And, you know, it's like, so, you know, we try to focus on responsible filmmaking as well so that you're building a relationship with the people that you're making the film about. And so with Elizabeth um, Castle, she 
she showed up at on my mom's doorstep in 1998 and she never left so she's kind of like a family member now I don't know I don't know how she feels about that but <laughs> but yeah so we're you know we trying to just support what's happening on the ground in the oral history project but you could go to the website worrywomen.org you can also, if you want to find out information, there's Warrior Women, oh no, info at warriorwomen.org. So those are some places you could go and some of the things that we're involved in on the ground. Um, Marcella, is the Oral History Project also online? Or we're working on it, yeah. Yeah, we're working on, some of it is, some of it is, and you know, some of it there's still working, we're still working on like editing and getting it, you know. And of course that that takes money. So of course. Whenever we, we get some funding, then we get a whole bunch of work done and it goes on the website and you know, so it's it's a little bit it's not constant, but we're working on it. Okay. Lupita asked about it, so I'll send it to her. Might be a good inspiration. Awesome. Uh, Monica, I have a question for you next. And the question is, what do you see as the director's responsibility in telling stories of trauma, especially ones that are current and ongoing? Mm, it's a complicated. Um, I think first is understanding or sharing enough of yourself and everyday life with someone else to understand when the other person feels comfortable enough um, to share and what what they decide like at the end of the day is like what Lupita wanted and her community wanted to share is something that they talk about once a month, especially once a year so that the massacre doesn't um, isn't forgotten, right? So that's something that's very present in Akiel. Um, but then personal memories that, that bring up exactly what happened. Um, that's, a, that's something that it comes from like having a relationship and having trust and saying, is this worth it for you to, to share, even if it's just a audio recording again, and I think what I underestimated at the end was when we watched the film um, in a theater in San Cristobal, um, we did like a local premiere and also in, in Akial, the community. And we were sitting, she was sitting in front and um, everyone was so impressed. And I think that, I don't know, I'd like to ask Lupita how she felt about that, but I think it was more impactful for her to see the story on a big screen in front than I had. Um, Imagine because it was something that we always talked about. We saw clips. Um, so I guess if that's like, that's like a lesson learned. But I think that's, um, it's in like an ongoing um, conversation. Um, and always know when to walk away. And there are a lot of things that we didn't include in the film too. It's only a 30, 20 minute film in the end, right? Thank you, Monica. It's so helpful. These are, you know, struggles that so many of us have across different art forms of what stories to tell, which parts of the stories to tell, which parts of the stories remain private. Mm -hmm. I think one thing I'd just like to add, I think that from the beginning, we all understood that the common goal was for her, her story as a survivor to resonate in more parts of the world um, to put more pressure on was the Mexican government isn't going to do a lot but the case also went to um, the inter-American um, court um, and there's just also just more consciousness about what can like history continues to repeat itself there's still no justice in her community and for so many um, communities in the region all over the world unfortunately the story repeats itself. Um, 
So I think it was just like everyone came to the table and was like, it's worth it for us to, um, especially Lupita wasn't, I don't think it was, I'd rather her talk about it, but it's worth it for me to retell this story so people know what I live so other people won't have to live this too. And that's what she says on camera too. Um. Excellent, thank you for that um, added dimension. <clears throat> Jody, I have a question for you. We're curious to know how important was it to include Nellie Carlson's and Ed Tuax Early's testimonies in telling Mary's story? Well, I applaud uh, the director, Courtney Montour, who's just a brilliant, a uh, woman from Ganawage who had the insight to bring Mary to X early son, as well as Nary, M Nellie Carlson, who was um, one of the partners in Indian rights for Indian women, the movement in Canada. And unfortunately, you know, a year after we shot uh, the film, those two extraordinary humans passed uh, to the spirit world. And so, you know, Courtney had the insight um, to know that we needed to capture their story and their voice to bring Mary's story back to life for all of us to learn from. Uh, you know, the, the murder threats and the violence that these women stand up against um, for the generations to come is unfathomable. And they were able to share insights that, you know, we, we wouldn't have had any way of knowing. So, they really made the story strong and competent and beautiful and provided a, a lens to the struggle that wasn't documented anywhere else. Wow. Ha ha ha, I muted myself. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Yeah, I really just, um, it resonates. And it actually leads me to, I'm gonna insert one of my own questions here for you that's just gonna dovetail off that a bit. Because when I was watching um, I Am Indian again, it really inspired, it lit that fire inside that happens when we see these strong stories of change. Um, and I'm curious to know, how do we keep that fire burning without, without um, feeding it so much to grow into anger? And if that's something that um, was a struggle as part of telling the story. You know, the anger goes hand in hand with injustice and we can't deny the anger and we have to use it to motivate and inspire us and to fuel us to continue to strive for change for our people. And the director, Courtney Montour, did such a, an amazing job of harnessing that and, and showing the value of standing up. And, you know, sometimes the fear can take over and the anger, but in the end, it, it always works out. Like the women always stood strong in the, in the face of adversity and they were able to overcome because they believed in each other and lifted each other. Often their own men attacked them and standing up against your own people, against the colonial state. I mean, these are huge, huge things and they sacrificed everything. And we have every right to be anger, but fundamentally at the root of all of it is love. Mary Two acts early loved who she was as a Mohawk woman. She loved her people. She loved her children. And that's what fueled her fire. And so just as angry as we are, we are just as loving and beautiful. And it's making sure that we nurture both of those things. And that's ceremony. You know, ceremony, our language, our people, our prayers, they're powerful medicine. Oh, yeah. that really resonates. Madonna, did you want to add to that? No, I, I, I'm just it's wonderful. It's just good to hear. Love she's, that. The, she's the original author. I'm just reiterating what I've heard her say over the years. <laughs> uh, 
Guadalupe, the next question is for you. Um, we're curious to know what truth would you like viewers to know about the Actiel massacre? And what change do you want to see your activism creating, both in Mexico or internationally? Eh, pues eso, Lupita, de qué, qué verdad sabes, quieres que la gente que ve esto sabe, más que todo internacionalmente, ¿verdad? O sea, ¿qué quieres que cambia y qué verdad quieres que, que conozcan? Ah. Pues este, de la masacre de Acteal, este, que fue un crimen del Estado mexicano cometido por los tres niveles de gobierno, tanto mexicano como este, o sea, eh, que este, pues que no hay justicia que premia a los asesinos, el Estado mexicano eh, premia a los asesinos, no los castiga. Eh, les da una mensualidad, actualmente les está dando una mensualidad a los asesinos, a los autores materiales de la masacre de Acteal y los autores intelectuales, pues no, no están siendo investigados, no están siendo castigados y pues este, eso es lo que hemos hecho mes con mes, ¿no? este, difundir esta información, que el mundo sepa ¿no? que, que la masacre de Acteal sigue impune que el Estado mexicano no tuvo la capacidad de juzgar y castigar a los responsables de la masacre y que aún este, estamos, el caso Acteal ya no está en manos del Estado mexicano, actualmente está en la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, donde estamos esperando un informe de fondo que por, hasta la fecha no hay respuesta, ¿no? no hay un informe de fondo, seguimos esperando, no nos han dicho nada, no sabemos qué pasa. Eh, lo que sí mueve rápido el gobierno no es cuando este, en la audiencia en Washington que este, se hizo allá, el gobierno mandó su, pues su, su gente ¿no? a, a ofrecer una solución amistosa que obviamente no lo aceptamos como organización, no lo aceptamos. Nosotros no queremos llegar a un acuerdo porque la justicia no se, no se llega a un acuerdo, no simplemente o hay o no hay justicia. ¿no? Entonces no aceptamos, pero pues nos ha provocado divisiones. Eh, hay un grupo que sí, sí aceptaron esa, ese informe. Ese, esa solución, pero la organización no lo hemos amasado, que no hemos aceptado, lo que queremos es el informe de fondo que sea responsabilidad de Acteal, ¿no? porque hasta la fecha no ha sido señalado y no, no hay justicia, ¿no? no hay una investigación de fondo. ¿no? Y pues... En, si hay algún cambio o qué cambio, perdón, no entendí bien. Sí, me, me puedes explicar, esperar para que lo traduzco rápido. Um, for the first part, gracias. For the first part, she says, um, um, the, actual, the actual massacre was a sí. state. Ah, sí. ¿Está bien? Perdón. Um, voy a traducir. Um, the Actiel massacre was a state crime by the Mexican government. There's still not been justice. The Mexican government even gives a pension, a monthly um, uh, funds to the assassins, the local ones. The, actual, the intellectual authors are still free. They haven't been investigated. Now it's been um, over 20 years. Um, so it's still in the case. Still in Pune, the case is now in the hands of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, um, but the Abejas, her community, has been waiting for an investigative report for years now. I think it first went to them in 2005, um, so it's still at a standstill. The Mexican government recently um, tried to offer an amicable solution, like reparations with a group of the survivors, but her organization does not accept it. They want justice. Um, Um, so they're still waiting for this report and um, they don't they don't want the world to think that the case has been solved basically. 
Esa es la primera parte. That's the first part. No sé si tienes algo para agregar a como qué la gente internacional puede hacer para ayudar a llegar a más conciencia o justicia. Lupita. Sí, ya. Yeah. Este, pues eh, lo que hemos hecho siempre, ¿no? En varias ocasiones, varias organizaciones han firmado como cartas de exigencia de justicia para el caso de la masacre de Actear o han grabado videos mandando cómo solidarizarse con la organización en la búsqueda de justicia o también este publicar las, la, los comunicados que subimos mes con mes, las actividades de la organización, que este, eso hacemos siempre y eso nos ayuda mucho. De hecho, este, desde siempre hemos contado con el apoyo de la sociedad civil, que son quienes este, siempre han estado apoyándonos en la difusión, en pues... Este, pendiente y yo creo que eso ayuda mucho la, en la difusión y en, en no sé en cartas en, en solidarizarse no con la masa, con la con el caso actual no y eso es lo que creo que puede apoyar y no. perfecto okay so she says that um, so many organizations have sent uh, cards um, uh, demanding justice on behalf of the Abejas de Aquial. Um, also, many people, organizations share communications from the organization that they publish a lot, videos, updates. Um, and in the end, the people who have helped them are um, Sociedad Civil, which is like civil society, people who care about um, their justice. Um, so I think spreading the word um, is the response. I mean, Thank the you. more international pressure, the better, because the, the case is still stalled. Mm -hmm. The next question that we have is for the whole panel. So anyone who feels like they have an answer, I'm going to invite that into the space. The question is that Indigenous youth play such critical roles in our movements and in many communities they've become more and more engaged with community change especially in recent years and i'm curious to know what you would like to share with the indigenous youth who are engaged in resistance work is there anyone who feels moved to to respond to that Oh, this is Madama. Um, I can talk to just basically what we're doing, you know, with to we understand that any issue that you're working on locally, it involves your people. And what does that mean? That means everybody of all ages. So that's why, for example, with our grandmother's group, we have the OGs, that's the old grandmas. And then we have the YGs, the young grandmas. You know, the young grandmas are working. In, you know, probably most of them are employed and they're raising grandchildren. The OGs, we are, you know, elders now, you know, so we can, we have the time to go to meetings. We have the time to do the organizing. And the YGs support, you know, support us, keep us on track because we're forgetful, you know, that type of thing, you know, so it works, you know, really good with us. But Again, the issues are, are for, for our people, for the community. So everyone that wants to is, you know, is involved. And with our young people, they can see, they can see that the work continues regardless of age and where they fit in. So uh, for example, right now, coming to this, this ceremony that we were, my sister and I, you know, we're elders. So we have one of our young relatives and she drove for us. You know, she ha helps us carry our bags, that type of thing, you know. But she, at the same time, is a part of what we're doing. And she's involved in it. And then from here, we're going on to do other things. And so, you know, you just you just do your, what you do every day, your work, what you do. 
you involve other people of all ages, you know, the young men, the young women. And uh, it just kind of flows because our issues never change. Our issues are the same. They were the same when I was young, you know, we're still, you know, and we're land-based. So of course, we're always in the crosshairs of every corporation, extraction, you know, mining, you name it, you know, and the government and what have you, this, that, and the other thing, colonized to the max, you know? So we understand that. So the issues, we don't have to convince anybody of anything, you know? And we're there to advise and offer when asked, when we're consulted, you know, then we're, then we're part of, of what's going on. You know? So it's good though. I like it. Thank you. Thank you, Madonna. Did anyone else on the panel want to weigh on in on this? Did you ask the question again? Yeah, just um, is there anything that you would like to share with indigenous youth who are engaged in resistance and community change movements? Keep going. <laughs> Do not stop. <laughs> but I think um, young people have, they have the advantage of youth being young. And so I just encourage you to keep Go forward, you know, you like like um, my mom said, you you have support. And so young people have moved the mountains in history. And so we need we need you. We need you to be active. We need you to be informed. We need you to be unafraid, all of that. Because you're at the age where that makes most sense to everyone, including you. So I just, I keep going, go for it. Got your back. Oh my goodness, I love that. That's just what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> Jody, you look like you might've had something to add. Well, I think that's the beautiful thing about who we are is, you know, if we want our our little ones to grow up to be just like us. They come everywhere with us. That intergenerational knowledge transmission is part of our identity, part of our practices. And, you know, listen to your elders. I mean, if there's anything that has given me wisdom, insight, strength, you know, to be anything in this life, it's the elders who've guided me. So offer that protocol and spend time with the old people. And then you'll know, you'll know what are the right things to do. I, Lupita says she has something to add. Please, yeah, Lupita. Este, pues solo este agregar que sí, este, yo veo que los jóvenes para nosotros en la organización es muy importante la participación de los jóvenes porque son el futuro. Eh, estamos luchando especialmente creo que para ellos por un mundo mejor para ellos y pues sí es necesario la participación y nosotros estamos integrando a los jóvenes tratamos de buscar áreas áreas de trabajo para que puedan ir aprendiendo de la organización y que vean cuáles son cuáles han sido log sus logros cuáles han sido sus metas y cuál es el objetivo de la organización ¿no? y entonces tenemos varias áreas donde participan jóvenes como este uno de ellos es teatro área de teatro de jóvenes donde este pues como yo este hacen actividades también pues por por este la organización no de, o sobre la masacre bueno en, en, ellos son son como ya dijeron son muy creativos también y pues este creo que sí es muy eh, y también hacen un rap también que grabamos verdad 
Um, she says, the participation of the youth is so important because they are the future. So that's, of course, um, why we fight for a better world um, in the organization. Um, I was translating the shed. Yeah. Solo, solo voy a traducir rápido. Um, the per participation of the youth is so important because they are the future. That's why we fight for a better world. In the organization, they find areas of work that um, that they can work for, or the youth can work for in the organization, what goals and objectives they share. For example, there's theater. They um, Once a year, they act out the massacre and many other creative things. There's also um, a a rap group that Lupita was um, sharing and it's one of the scenes in the video. Um, there's the chorus, um, there's the area of artesanas, of um, tejidoras, como se dice, pues, como se dice artesanas en inglés. Es como, pues, crafts, no? The, como se dice? Um, that, that's all so far. ¿Quieres agregar algo más? Hand, like, yeah, crafts, art, artisan, uh-huh. Sorry, something that I only hear in Spanish. Um, Lupita, ¿quieres agregar algo más? ¿Me escuchaste? I think that's it then. Thank you so much. I think that was, you know, such an inspiring, collection of responses to end us on. Um, so I just want to flag that we're now at the end of our time for today, even though there are certainly more questions. And I know that I could sit in conversation with you for hours because you're all such fascinating and inspiring, strong people that I'm really grateful to be in community with even for this moment. Um, if there are any sort of final words that anyone would like to share, I'll make space for that. And then we'll say our goodbyes. Nope, final words. We feel like we got it all out there, hey? <laughs> Keep lifting and loving. I think we're waiting on each other. <laughs> Everyone's being so polite. Well, I think I think um, final words is again. I want to thank thank the filmmakers and the festival and all of you who have played a part in getting us there and showing our films. I think that's really really important. Um, so I want to thank everybody for all your efforts and you know keep up the good work. And I'm glad I could be here and be a part of this. And I I'm really um, thankful and honored to meet the other women and so thank you wopila uh, i'd like to again say uh how honored i am to be a part of this i'm just totally impressed i'm just amazed especially with our um, sister from the south you know it's so good to hear to hear her I don't understand, but it sounds good because I know it from the heart. So, and, and our sisters from the North, you know, you'd be more like my granddaughters, but <laughs> anyway, I'm just honored to be here. And thank you so much for including me. Thank you um, for bringing us all together in this invitation. And it's an honor. Um, Lupita, I just wanted to say que Madonna dijo que, que aunque no te entiendes, es muy lindo tener una hermana al sur y escucharte y ver que, pues, pues la, pues el, la lucha es como traduce a diferentes lugares de América, ¿no? Pues yo puse ese, ese punto, pero así lo siento yo. So I, I just told her, um, Madonna, what you said, and that also um, I think it's inspiring to see that this resistance is all through the Americas and it's, an, it's nice to have everyone in the same room, even though it's um, online. So thank you all. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, 
Thank you to all the filmmakers, everyone who was behind the scenes making it happen, the festival organizer. Uh, together we rise. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Thank you so much. On behalf of KDOCS and on behalf of the audience and on behalf of myself, thank you, Hamia, to Madonna, Marcella, Guadalupe, Monica, and Jody. So appreciate you taking the time to share your stories, your experiences, and your expertise. Finally, I want to say thank you to the audience for joining us to celebrate these documentaries and documentary activism. We hope that something we hope that something you've learned here tonight will be the spark that inspires you to get engaged in your communities and to pursue social justice work wherever it lands for you. And I hope that all of the audience members will continue to please enjoy the festival, including the last live event tomorrow, which is February 26th. As always, for more information and tickets, you can visit online at kdocsff.com or at kdocsff on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. With that, I wish you all a good night. Amayuksa, everyone. We owe you I love you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye.